Can you share five lessons that will help someone be a better filmmaker right now? I think five lessons that'll make you a better filmmaker right now is first, trust your actors. Actors are always gonna come in there to try to elevate the material, to try to create better work for you. So always trust your actors. Uh, number two, don't get so trapped on what your vision is that you're so focused on it, you can't listen to other ideas or other people because um, that'll limit what you can get. Uh, third is don't give up, you know what I mean? If things aren't exactly going your way, that doesn't mean that there isn't something right around the corner or something that you can do to kind of get to that quicker. I think another tip is to read a lot of scripts. I think reading scripts and then watching the films that were actually made off of the scripts, you'll learn so much about how the story was actually executed. It's one thing to see a movie and be like, oh, this is how I would have done it, or this is how I, they should have done it. But when you read the actual material that it was based on, the blueprint itself, and then see, oh, that was interesting, the way that that director executed the scene or the blocking in that scene was, was different than the way I would have blocked that scene, but that was interesting. Uh, another bit of advice that I would give is edit, move, edit projects as much as you can because the more as a director you're on set thinking as an editor, the faster you'll be, the more concise you'll be, and the more able to get what you need uh, on set is because you've spent that time in the edit bay seeing what works, seeing how cuts takes and work to get cut together and elements kind of don't you don't need and things that you do need really helps with that. So I think cutting projects, cutting stuff on your own is really essential. And I remember one of the things that I did in film school was I would take a like, let's say a scene from you know, whatever your favorite movies are, whether it's Lawrence of Arabia or The Godfather or whatever, you take those films and you take a scene, you drop it on a timeline and you just find all the cuts for that scene. And you notice, you look at it in, the, in whatever editing program you're using, like, oh, so they cut from that to that to that. And it really is an invaluable way to see how a scene plays out, how cuts can get either shorter or faster how the director and the editor create suspense or tension by the way that the cuts are laid out in the scene. So that was a really invaluable learning lesson is by looking at other projects and seeing how they were cut. It's excellent. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Do you remember the, the films you used to watch again? Oh. Um, like some of the ones that really stuck out where you were. Stuck out to me, yeah. Um, trying to think, that's, I always get, oh, okay. It's hard to it's hard for me to choose five films or just a list of films that had a lot of, uh, you know, that that kind of left an impression on me as a filmmaker. I think more than anything, it's uh, you know the directors themselves and their body of work that I look back on and kind of get inspiration from, like looking at Kubrick, looking at how he was able to kind of tap into different genres like horror. Uh, the war films and, and all those different genres that he touched on, how he would uniquely shoot a scene was always interesting. That would always give me inspiration. I'd be like, okay, you know, it was, that, was an, that was a different way to shoot this scene. So, you know, I'll try to think of other directors or other filmmakers and see how at their work, they might have approached a similar scene and try to be like, oh, that's, that's different. I never would have thought of that, but that'll kind of inspire me as a filmmaker, I mean, Kubrick, Spielberg, Kurosawa, uh, Christopher Nolan, those are the type of filmmakers where their work is so unique and such a strong voice that anytime I need inspiration and wanna just kind of draw back into that creative well, I can just look at any of their films and find something unique or different that will help like motivate me and inspire me. And speaking of chess, we talked about it earlier in the interview. Uh, Kubrick used to play chess for money, right? Yeah. When he was no, young. he was yeah. No, Kubrick was uh, he approached the filmmaking process like a chess game in a way, right? Every problem that came at him was, you know, another move on 
on the board. And he would always try to anticipate two steps ahead, other things that could happen. And, and it's, chess is not just an analogy for filmmaking. It's really an analogy for life where, you know, if you can become a good chess player, then you, you know, put your mind in that mindset, you can become a better filmmaker and hopefully a better person because you can kind of look at life in that, from that perspective. Yeah, he had a very unique way of looking at the world, a contrarian way yeah, in a lot of ways. When you definitely. hear interviews with him, totally. he was a very interesting guy. Yeah, very fascinating figure.